In today's show, we're going to learn about Microsoft Forms and Flow, and we're going to do this in the context of a coronavirus app that I just built for a customer. Right? They had a real quick need, and so in less than an hour, we popped them out this app to meet their compliance. So I thought I would use this as the impetus to teach you guys about getting data from Forms over into your data source and using some of the conditional logic both inside of Forms and inside of Flow. So it should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today's show is about Microsoft Forms and Flow. And the idea here is that we want to be able to move data out of Forms into our data source, wherever that might be, maybe do some conditional type of logic on it. And we're going to do all that using uh, Power Automate or Flow, as it is actually called by me. Either way, the idea is we want to start to kind of put those pieces together. There's an intro video I already put out there. I'll put a link below that got you kind of started with Forms. So what we're going to do in this example when we walk through it is we're not going to like have to go over all the basics of forms. What we're going to do is we're going to go to that next level of forms and then jump over to flow and talk about how it is. And the whole reason I'm doing this particular video with this topic was last week, a customer reached out and said, hey, we got all these legal requirements now to uh, you know, keep our workers working to prove that we are in compliance with the, the orders. So I went ahead and built their app for them. We did it live together in less than an hour got the solution out and running, and I kind of tweeted about it, and a bunch of people said, hey, I want to see what you did there. Well, I can't show you the customer app, so we're going to make a smaller version of what we did for those guys, but really just run you through it and help you get a little context of what you might build. And that's one of the things you want to remember, you know, is we have all these new needs, right? All of a sudden, everyone works from home, which is brand new. We're used to passing around pens and paper, and now we got to do it virtual. And the Power Platform has just got so much power here, right? You can just quickly pop out these solutions that take previously manual processes and turn them into uh, solutions. So anyway, I'm not here to sell you on it, but I was pretty excited about this, so that's why I thought I'd share. Let's just switch over to my desktop. We'll take a look at it and see what we like. All right, so over here on my desktop, yeah, first you might have noticed I changed shirts because it's a different day. I made, did one recording. I didn't like it, so I came back and redid this. So anyway, it's for you. All right, so over here on my desktop real quick, um, I want to just run through the survey. So at a high level, hey, what is your name? It's Chewy. Do you have any symptoms? Now, notice down here I have three questions. And if I'm like, nope, nope, and nope, nothing happens. But one of the cool things we're going to add today is if you answer yes to any of these questions, stop, then you get uh, this pop-up kind of telling you, you know, you can't work and you can't do. So this will be one of the things we do. We'll add a little more advanced branching into our uh, survey. And then um, now you've kind of seen what that looks like. On the SharePoint side, we're going to use SharePoint to store the results. It doesn't have to be SharePoint. Um, it can be any data source that Flow can connect to. But I use SharePoint a lot of times in these cases. It's real easy for you guys to recreate. And speaking of recreating, I've learned my lesson. And so here I will show you real quick the way I set the SharePoint list up. They are all just single line of text columns. I renamed title to be name, right? That's right here. And then you can just see I made a question for all the different, uh, or a column for all the different questions. So pretty easy, I think. But that hopefully gives you an idea of what you need to build for SharePoint because people ask, and I always feel bad that I forget. So there it is. Okay, so let's jump over to Forms. And remember what we're going to do is we're going to use Flow to move it. But before we do that, let's get our form working. And so over here in my form, the first thing I want to cover is, I'm going to go over here. And so there's branching rules. I already have a rule. I'm going to delete it so we can watch it get created together. And so I am using Forms Pro, and the reason I used Forms Pro was A, this customer had Forms Pro, but I also, things like branching rules are a lot easier. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this in Forms Pro, and then we'll talk about how it would show up if you were using the freer version of Pro or Forms, which you can. So we're gonna do a new rule. And so we're gonna call this Video Hide. And so what is my condition? Add a condition, select a question. Do you have any symptoms? Is equal to yes. And, but one of the cool things here, add another condition. Ah, I can either say and, or in our case, I want to do an or. So or, have you been in contact with anyone? Yes. Or, have you traveled recently? So what that really says right there is if any three of those questions gets answered yes, then this will be validated as true. And so what are we going to do there? So add if true. So if it's true, add an action. We're going to show, select a question, and the uh, one with the big red stop sign. So that's how we're going to show it. And then important to go down here, you're going to say, and 
If false, add an action hide question. So I, they kind of hide this functionality, which is really annoying. I, I missed it the other day. But you can see that now this gives us the ability. So if they answer yes accidentally, they're, oh, no, I didn't mean that. They can still click no. And so it'll go back to hiding. So it gives them kind of that back and forth. But that is your rule. And so now we've created this rule. The other thing that I messed up in one of my earlier demos, you know, the one you guys didn't get to see, is down here for question five. So this is the one where I added an image and said, hey, you know, call your supervisor if you answer yes because you're not allowed to work. I made it required, which is what we want. If it shows, it should be required. But I set the visible. Uh, by default, the visible will be true. You want to set the visible to false. And so then that way, when they first load up the survey, it'll be hidden. That was one of the mistakes I was making in a, a previous example. So, so make sure that is invisible. Other than that, right, they're very straightforward questions. You could have more, you could have less. You know, you could get into more complex forms. That's not what this is about. Um, the other the last little piece here with forms that I want to talk about. Oh, no, I promised you. So if you're using forms, the not pro version, then the only real big difference here is in branching. You can do branching over there, but you can't do the ands and ors. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to have a separate question for each one of these. So you'd have a, so between two and three here, there'd be another one that said, you know, if they answered yes to this question, then show it to them. And then there'd be another separate question between three and four. You'd say, if they answered yes to this one, show that one. And then finally this one. So you couldn't have just one question show no matter which of these they said yes, because you can't do that complex branching. So you just have to have lots of them. And so that'd make our flow have a few more steps. Our SharePoint list would have more columns. Um, so it's not as nice of a solution, but if you're still on that version of forms, I want you guys to understand how it would work. So that's what you would do over there. Okay, the other thing, and this is the same in both, is if you click on uh, right here and you go to settings. So with this particular customer, they um, all their users that are filling these out actually have accounts. So it's like, well, that's great. We'll know who's filling it out. We don't have to ask them what their name is. But it turns out that this is a bunch of non-technical field workers, right? They're people that don't come in the office a lot, they don't log in a lot. And so because they needed this survey to be easy and fast and not affect their workflow, and then we're rolling it out, like literally the guy found out at four, it had to be available for 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. So what we ended up doing was we changed this to anyone with the link can respond. So even though they could have done only people in my organization can respond, and then we would have got all this data, what would have happened was his workers would have had to log in to fill out the survey and he didn't want them having to do that. He just wanted them to click on the link, answer the questions and go. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. You, even using it internally, this was like different to me. Uh, we could still have it this way. And record name, you're like, oh, I can still record name. I thought about this, but if you read the little hover, this is only applicable for people with personalized links and we're not going to send you know his hundreds of employees personalized links. So we're not going to know who's filling it out. So this was a setting that he needed for his solution. All right. Um, the last little piece here is it was real weird. Like I kept wanting to hit share because that's normally how we would share this out. But share is actually sharing like a copy of this so someone else could build from this form. So what we want to do is we want to hit send. And then for him, all we did was we went here to link and grabbed it. But Forms Pro has a lot of really cool ways to send this out, to personalize that type of stuff. We're not going to get into there today, but I wanted you guys to know it was there. Uh, we just send a link, and this is the same in the other version of Forms as well, the non-pro version. You can just grab a link and send that link. So that's what he did. He grabbed this link, and then he put this link in an email, you know, company-wide email. Hey, before you start working, fill this out every day. Cool? Okay. So we understand the SharePoint side. We understand the Forms side. Let's go over to Power Apps and talk, or not Power Apps, Power Automate, and talk about how this is going to work. So over here under, uh, I want to build a flow. And believe it or not, anytime I use flow, uh, like these I like templates here, so I'm going to go here to templates. Not anytime I use it, anytime I use forms. And I'm going to type in forms because record response or record form responses in SharePoint is right here. Boop. And after way too long, it finally loaded. And so here you can see, I'm going to just click continue. And boom, it has our initial framework. Now we're going to take, we're going to fill out this framework and then we're going to add a condition, right? Because one of the things that we wanted to do for this particular case is I wanted to send an email off only if someone answered yes to one of the questions and alert people like, hey, you know, you probably should pay attention. This person's alerted. They might have symptoms or what have you. So let's work through this and then we'll add the condition. 
So when a new thing is done, pick a form. We hit the drop down here, and I believe it is this one, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna double check myself because I don't ever trust myself. Form, spoil, SharePoint Alec, that's it, woohoo. And so then it's automatically got to apply to each. This is one of those nuances. Forms returns it as table data, even though it's a single response. So flow has to process it as table data. So don't overthink this. Just be glad it was here. Get response details from our uh, one we just did. This gets their uh, list of responses that came back. And so then now we get down here to create items. So I'm going to use SharePoint in this example. You could switch this to create the items in CDS or SQL or you know Google Sheets, wherever you want to put the data, uh, you can store it. So, and you can take and use their template and you can still just come in here and write, I can just delete this and add another one for creating an item in a uh, common data service, no problem. But as it turns out, I actually want to put it into SharePoint in this example. So we'll go down here, Power Apps Videos, and then the, um, what is the name of my SharePoint list? Anyone pay attention? I did not. Let's go back over to SharePoint. Form responses, <laughs> too easy. So we'll go up here, form responses. And so then now, boom, it's like, hey, all right, cool. And over here, it's like name is required, which is okay in this scenario, but remember you could come over here and you could have just unchecked this, said name, and then right here, require this column contains information and say no and then it wouldn't be required anymore. So pretty easy. Um, in this case, I'll always have a name because it's a required question in my form, but I just wanna make sure you understood that if you were using SharePoint. But so we're just gonna now use dynamic content. So um, we've got over here, what is your name? Do you have any symptoms? Boom. Have you been in contact with a sick person? Boom. Have you traveled? Oh, scroll up again. Dun, 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 dun. Have you traveled? And then supervisor they spoke to, um, that would be the this one. So there you go. Just boop, 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 popped in, and we've got those, and now we'll be able to get those responses in. Now, the first thing I always do, and I really recommend you guys do this as well, is build these things in baby steps. So we're going to hit save, and then now I'm going to hit test, and I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to perform the trigger actions. We're going to do a test. And the nice thing about this is it makes it poll faster, so hopefully that way it'll see my form get filled out a little bit quicker than if I uh, just went and triggered it. So we'll go over here, I'll grab my link, copy, we'll paste it right over top of the last time I put the link in here, that's fine. All right, so what is my name? My name is Chewy, oh, uh, do you have any symptoms? No, uh, we'll just do no, no. All right, so we're just a simple, clean bill of health. We'll hit submit, and then we'll go over here to my flow. Your flow ran successfully, and then if we go over to our SharePoint list, boom, we've got our data in here, okay? So that test worked. Now the thing I encourage my customer to do is let's do it again. And so I'm just going to throw the link back in there again. And so we'll do Chewy2. And this time we'll say we have a symptom. So we'll say no, no, or no, we'll do no, yes, no. Oh, we've got the stop sign. That's working, cool. And who did the... Uh, should we report that to? We reported it to Ferguson the cat. Ferguson the cat. So we'll say submit. And so then now if we go back over here and do a refresh, Chewy2, no, yes, no, Ferguson the cat. Cool. All right. So I feel good that we're capturing the data. Now remember also with forms, just so we're all on the same page, you've also can go over here to responses. And now this happened to us when we were testing, like, oh, Oh, why am I not getting responses here? But what we found out was if we hit refresh, uh, it went and queried. It's like, oh yeah, you've got two responses. So keep that in mind also that your responses are being stored in Forms or Forms Pro, either one. Um, so you could come back over here and get the responses this way, but he wanted them in a SharePoint list. And you might put it in somewhere else because you want to be able to do data analytics, you know, uh, run Power BI, something like that on it. So that's why we're doing it and saving it in SharePoint as well. Okay, so then now that we know that the basis of saving our data works, now what I want to do is I'm going to add a condition. Okay, I want to be notified if anyone says yes. So I go down here, add an action. And so right there is condition. Okay, so now we'll just add our conditions in here. And so I'm going to scroll down here and under um, 
our pod each, right? We've got our different uh, pieces. And so there's our different ones, all right? So do you have any symptoms is equal to yes. And then add a row, and so that same type of logic. Or, and then we'll just scroll down here at the bottom. And uh, have you been in contact with anyone is equal to yes. And then finally, one more row. Add, oh my goodness, add a row. And finally, one might argue flow does not do a great job of this. And so then, um, what was the last one? Have you traveled recently? There we go. And so then finally, we'll do a yes there. So if any three of those were responded to with yes, and notice I used the forms action, I probably could have used the SharePoint create actions, but I like to get it from the source. So if any of those three are yes, then what we did for the customer is I just went here to Outlook, and somewhere in here is good old send an email. And so finally, I just sent an email to myself and you could have additional logic, send it to a group, whatever you want to do. But in my case, I just want to send it to me. And then what am I going to say? You know, they said yes. It's again, not nearly as romantic as uh, the other yes. And then um, their name was, and then I'll just kind of fill in the blanks. So we'll go down here and we'll be like, hey, um, what is your name? Their name was, or their name, I guess was, I guess it is, their name is, and they spoke to, and then finally uh, down here, um, you answered yes, right there. And so that looks good, right? We could fill out this additional things here for CCs, BCCs, all that fun stuff, but that looks pretty nice. So then what I'm gonna do, I'll hit save, and then we'll hit test, and then I'll just use my previous run. I don't wanna fill out that thing anymore. So we know this one had a yes in it, so we'll say test, and it'll just process that data again for us. Our apply to each is running, and you can see check, 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 check. And then you can see, oh, the expression was a yes, right? Because there was a yes in there. And so it sent an email, so give me a second, I'll grab that. And there you go, you can see I got an email, they said yes, their name is Chewy2, and they spoke to Ferguson the cat. Pretty cool. So, so now that you understand the basics of getting stuff out of forms, and right, remember it's the same whether it's pros, for, uh, forms pro or regular forms, but now you understand the basic of getting that data out, now you can do all the cool flow tricks you know. You know, so we can have notifications, we get sent, one of my customers sends out text messages, right, it's a really big deal, so they're like uh, texting people, you can just record it, and one of the reasons we want to just record it is not only maybe we want to do analytics later, probably not, but these guys also want to make sure they're meeting all their compliance needs because their lawyers like, hey, you know, just in case anyone comes back later and says you weren't testing or whatever, right? We've got proof because we're we're capturing this data electronically. So one of those things to kind of consider as you're solving your business problems is, you know, maybe we're we got belts and suspenders here, but belts and suspenders in this case is pretty critical. So I, I think that's all I've got. Um, if you're a training, you know, uh, subscriber over on the uh, curated list on trainingpowerapps911.com. I'll upload all these pieces so you guys can download those. Uh, the rest of you, you know, you can feel free to use this, create it. Leave comments below on creative ways you're doing things with this, right? Or are there other things? The last forms video I made, people had other ideas of how they would have done it differently. And it makes for good conversation down in the comment section. So be sure to share that. Um, I guess with all that, I'm just going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.